What happened to the man that coined the genre of murder mystery? To what extent did vice and addiction contribute to his death? How did politics play a role in this poet's demise? Today we test the believability of the death of Edgar Allan Poe. Welcome to Believing the Bazaar, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. That was so fast. Yeah, I, that's payback, just like last time. Oh, man, I wasn't ready for it. Okay, so this is, we all know Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I do not, I don't read him like for fun. I don't, It's he's not something that I get into. He's, okay, for me, he's like a grandfather of... Of of some of our favorite genres, your favorite genre for sure, horror, 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 horror. Yeah, no, I and I respect him, like the Telltale Heart. You know, like I I respect that stuff. It's just not my go. I'm more. I am unabashedly into contemporary. Yes, I'm and a contemporary guy. He is not contemporary at all. No, if you've read his work at all, you it's. I would say it's almost like Shakespeare meets a goth kid. <laughs> Probably nowadays it's considered Shakespeare. It's it, easier to, in, harder to interpret. But yeah. um, I feel like every kid reads like, you know, something in middle school or, or high school. From Abs- I Allen think you Park. have, I think you definitely have to. I, um, like, okay, I don't think anybody can say nevermore and, and not, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. That's it's also not something people say, just say now. <laughs> yeah, definitely like, not. oh, they overcharged me at Kohl's. Am I going to go there again? Give- nevermore. nevermore. You know? Hmm. Yeah, that's not how people talk so much. About that Coles cash. <laughs> I'm an Old Navy fan. Uh, fun fact about the Raven, the, well, some of the main things that makes it really compelling mm-hmm. is that it ends on that or sound, like mm-hmm. Nevermore, Lenore, Door, all that kind of stuff. That's you, what, you did call him a poet. Well, yeah. Well, that's that's his, like, his famous poem, like the Raven is the one that set him apart. Yeah. In sixth grade, I wrote a short story called The Raven, but it was a ripoff of the video game Metal Gear Solid, where mm. this guy just had to keep fighting bosses. I don't think he would have appreciated that. I was 11 years old. <laughs> he probably would have tore you apart, though. He was a harsh critic. Yeah. That's what I learned. He well, was a harsh critic. Yeah, but, you know, he's dead, so well, he, didn't, really. he didn't get a chance to read it. And that's what we're going to talk about. That's the point of this episode, is that he is dead, but no one really knows how or why. Are you ready to get into this story? I certainly don't know, so I'm excited to hear. Okay. So like I mentioned to you before, this is really going to be, I don't, it was off the podcast, but this is going to be heavy, un- heavy handed on the history. Yeah, you did mention that. I, you guys might be surprised to hear that we do actually communicate sometimes off the podcast. <laughs> Mostly in text messaging. Yeah. Every day. Yeah, every goddamn day. Yeah, you know, you did prepare me. Two days ago, that this is going to be history rich. So I yeah. brought that. What is it called? Where you, the thing you put over your eyes so you can sleep better? Oh, oh man, I used to have one. Yeah, I got one of those. I got some soothing music. I'm going to unplug these headphones and plug them into my phone <laughs> and listen to something soothing. Paint some eyeballs on your yep on your eyelids. I'm all ears. So we're going to talk about basically his history and get into the events that led up to his death. So Mr. Poe was born January nineteenth. 1809. Ooh, that's a long makes time ago. Him, yes, it was a long time ago, which makes him a Capricorn. I looked that up. And what Google says about Capricorns is that their personalities are characterized by intelligence, discipline, and loyalty, which is weird. It fits him in a really strong way. So th- this whole episode now is going to be about your astrological sign. No. <laughs> it's actually not about Poe. We just wanted you guys to listen. Yeah, and right. Click on it to download it's it. It's about Capricorns. Um, but no, yeah, he's a Capricorn, which I, t- I can't think of off the top of my head what that actually is. Nah, uh, it sounds a, like cornucopia to me. I think it's a goat or something. I'm a Pisces. You are a Pisces. Little Pisces. So, like I said, it's strange because it actually kind of matched how he, it fit his life. Like, he was extremely intelligent. He was very intelligent. You're and, making a lot of people right now buy into those newspaper astrological <laughs> readings, right? It, well, they don't always match, but this one, it's weird. It is. 
We should pay a newspaper to for you will listen to Believing the Bazaar. You will listen to <laughs> Believing the Bazaar <laughs> for every month. <laughs> like, I, dang, I guess I got to. He was also very disciplined with his writing. He was always changing things about his writing. Like he, until the day he died, he was still editing his writing. Sounds like he has a problem with calling something completed. Yes, or finished. He absolutely. A lot did. of people do. A lot of really creative and smart people do. So, not me. I throw that shit out there. <laughs> Dunzo. But you know. I'm very lackadaisical with that kind of thing. Uh, I, I believe in putting stuff out rather than making it perfect. And the last quality, loyalty. He was very loyal to his wife. Do you know anything about his wife? Nope. Oh, you're going to learn today. Yay. <laughs> so he was born in Boston to parents that were both actors. Really? I didn't know he's from Boston. Mm-hmm. When he was approximately two years old, his biological mother died from tuberculosis and his father had been gone already. He like he left more than a year ago. So at this point, his mother is dead, and he's an orphan. Him and his siblings are orphans. They all get adopted out to different different people. So his sister goes to another family by the name of Mackenzie. His older brother goes to his biological grandparents, and he gets adopted by this family with the last name of Allen. And this family in Allen, they never officially adopt him, but he does get his middle name, Allen. It's like from they're, just, they're just renting him. Uh, he's, he's on a lease. So many miles he can travel. Well, I'll tell you what. His dad is not happy with the lease. <laughs> they, they get into a lot of arguments. They're not on good terms ever. And in his teens. Teens? Teens? Yes. <laughs> in his teens, he started to write poetry. Um, in 1826, he enrolled in the University of Virginia, and he wanted to be a writer from there that's why they fought his dad was like hey ed the red Sox on come watch the game uh, and edgar was like no i gotta finish my poetry it's like but it's the socks the the adopted family was from virginia as well oh then then i i got that you i didn't tell you that i didn't tell you so you did kind of forget that hey i don't know anything about virginia i don't either they matthews bands from there is it okay i don't know anything else about virginia to be honest it's north of west virginia or is it <laughs> Is it east of West Virginia? They're close. They are close. <laughs> They're like kind of intermingled. But yeah, he goes to the University of Virginia in 1826, and he starts to get into debt. And to get out of that oh, debt, I feel that. Do you know what he does to get out? Does he kill himself? Is yeah. that what? Because I've been there. Mystery solved. No, he starts I been to. There, um, he starts to gamble to try to get out of the debts. That sounds like a great idea. It's not. He On ends up Red losing Sox. even more. He loses so much money, he has to uh, drop out of school. And these are broad strokes, by the way. And in 1830, he actually enrolls in West Point, the school West Point, after getting permission from his father, his his adopted father. Stepdad? Uh, yeah. And then he actually, he drops, he gets gets kicked out of West Point eventually. He never finishes He's like, college. I'm still editing my school career. I just can't finish. Still <laughs> he, working on it. He He always wanted to be a writer. And his father, his adopted father, did not like that. He was a businessman. He was also an immigrant from Scotland, which I thought was interesting. Oh, his stepdad? Mm-hmm. He's like, why can't he just go to a trade school? Yeah, well, he wanted to take over his business. What was his business? Selling socks, I think. <laughs> I mean, socks well, are going to be around forever, so. I don't actually know if it was socks. I don't remember what we sold. But Could have been gloves. Who knows? Could have been f***ing anything. I don't know. Scotch, because he's Scottish. So this is, ready for this, this is a fact. It's gross. He worked all over until he actually... Like, all over the East Coast until he settled in Richmond, Virginia. But this is the gross part. He does actually eventually marry his 13-year-old first cousin. Yeah, not down with that. Yeah, no. No, even back then, that was still weird. Weird AF. So weird. They actually waited until 1836 to publicly marry her until she was, like, 16. So, wait. what, What year was it? When they publicly married was 1836. So, and he was born in 1809? Yeah. Oh, he was well into his 30s. Oh, 36. Well, maybe 20. No, it was 27, right? Yeah, okay. I mean, it's not It's not okay. It's not better. It's not better. But she did eventually die at the year, uh, approximately 20 years old from tuberculosis as well. Wasn't that the Mercy Brown thing? The vampire? Yeah, it was. Thank you for remembering that. She, yeah. yeah. It's the only thing I remember from that history episode. <laughs> Just kidding. So, like I mentioned at the top of the episode, he was a critic. He was a harsh critic. Simon Cow level. Th- that's what he mostly worked on, like, as, like, f- during his working career, he was mostly a critic. 
also putting some other stuff out to publish, but he was mostly a, a critic, like criticizing his co- t- contemporaries. It's a weird position to be in. Being a, a re- like, imagine the real world being a critic, mm-hmm. where it's just like you know you're going to be a little bit of an asshole. Oh yeah, and he didn't give a. F- he... I think that's the thing. I think you have to be a person that doesn't care what other people think about you. Mm-hmm. And in his writings, he talked about things like drug use, like opium or alcohol, and so it was assumed by the public that he he partits partaked <laughs> he partook partook in these kinds of things, whether it be true or not. He was just on Wikipedia and WebMD looking up what happens. Uh, probably books, but yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. The Raven, like I said earlier, Book was... MD. <laughs> Page is MD. The Raven was his big break. It made him almost a household name. Almost. Almost. Like it, a mailbox. It was like, you know, it was like a B-list celebrity thing. Like, <laughs> it was still pretty good. So this is, this is what happens. On October 7th, 1849, Poe dies at the age of 40. Wow, young. Yeah, very young. And this is where the conspiracy takes place. This is the strangest thing. He left Virginia on the way to Philadelphia to help someone else with their their writing, their editing. And on the way, he vanished. He was found in a delirious state in the gutter on one of the streets of Baltimore. He was not dead. He was taken to a hospital. And a week later, in his weak and extremely drunk or some kind of delirious state, he, he ended up dying. So he did partake. Well, he partook and that's a matter for debate. Okay. So he didn't make it to Philly or he did. And he had a rough time coming back. That's also a matter of debate. Okay. <laughs> no one knows how he got into this position. No one knows how he got there. Um, and essentially no one knows what happened he was the last a, days before he died. A gutter. Mm-hmm. Gutter, a street gutter. What is that? Is that like a ditch? A street gutter? So, you know, like, like my house has a gutter. Yeah. So like the side he of the was street, in a house, the side of the street where the rainwater goes down, it's a gutter. Oh, okay, that's what that's called. Yeah, yeah, man. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> After he died, he was buried in the corner of a graveyard in an unknown grave marker. I was gonna say maybe he took the raven too much to heart and he climbed up on a house like he was a bird, and then he died in the gutter of a house in Baltimore. That's is that up for debate? Mm. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's another really strange detail I, I don't want to gloss over. He was also found wearing someone else's clothes. Did it just not fit well, or did it have the guy's or girl's name? Written? It was like secondhand clothes. It, it, it didn't fit well. Mm. And they weren't, they weren't his. But like I said, he was buried in a graveyard. Well, another one of Poe's cousins, one he did not marry, paid. <laughs> he paid to have this beautiful Italian marble gravestone marker. But a couple years later, a train derailed and crashed into it and destroyed it. No. Yeah. Do you think he was cheating on his cousin with his other cousin? Oh, the and, one that paid and, for it? And the guilt that he died, like, maybe he felt like he drove him to death because of the guilt of cheating on his other cousin with him, his also cousin. And so when he died, he's like, it's the least I can do. Man, that's convoluted. No, I don't think so. I think that's 100% up for debate. Not that we have to talk about on this podcast, but... So we're going to talk about the last couple days of Poe's life and the speculated events that happened. And we're going to determine which one we think it is. All right. So there are four theories about his death I really want to talk about right now. All right. I don't know any of them, so this is exciting. So the first theory I call death by hooligans. No, I had a cat named Hooligan. Oh, beautiful yeah. cat, beautiful cat. There's a short story called The Hooligans. Yeah, have you ever read of that? No, it's cool. It's a cool one. Every time I do trivia, though, me and my wife are the Hooli Mamas in okay. honor of her. Oh, that's nice. It's a cool story. It's about anarchy. So, death by hooligans. His death, Poe's death, Poe's death was officially written as congestion of the brain, which unofficially meant alcoholism. That's what they called out. Al- so, like you. It just, it was, like, shuts down your brain? It was, brain. like, code for alcohol. It was a nice way of saying he was an alcoholic. Yeah. Like, oh, that's good, at least. Congestion of the brain. And after he died, he was dragged through the dirt by one of his rivals. Oh, he had a rival? Yeah. So well, he, someone that he criticized really badly. Shouldn't have been so mean, man. So the, the public, actually, they mostly believed that it was alcohol. However, however, he was only ever seen socially drinking. He was never seen, like, alone at a bar. He was only ever seen with, like, friends occasionally having some drinks. Yeah. And also, he was a notorious lightweight. One drink, done. Cheap date. 
So, so this theory, is it a theory that he was dragged by an enemy after his death or is that a fact? He, uh, that he was, his name was dragged through the dirt? Oh, you mean his name? His name. Not actually. I don't know if that was clarified. Uh, I, I, I thought guess that's they, fair. I thought in the gutter he's, well, he didn't die in the gutter, but I was imagining some guy pissed off holding his manuscript, just dragging Edgar Allan Poe through the streets of Baltimore. No, no. I meant like in an obituary. Oh. I apologize. It just said big meanie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it painted him in the light of being an alcoholic. Okay, I got you. And the coroner's report kind of backed that up. Okay. Some scholars think that somehow he somehow got a drink into him and he was wandering through the streets. <laughs> he, got, he got injected with a drink. Somebody just went by and just like opened his mouth and dumped it in. He's like, oh no. <laughs> oh no, I'm very... Please don't give me your clothes. I'm, I'm a notorious lightweight. <laughs> They're ill-fitting. So the theory is that he was found by this gang of hooligans some kids some like young adults and basically they they robbed him and they beat him up and he was left wandering like half naked and i don't know how he got the like from this theory i'm not sure how he got more clothes maybe they threw him something that's really not explained that's why i think this theory is kind of lacking something yeah it doesn't really lead to his death beyond just the fact like alcoholism it does it also doesn't tell how he changed cities yeah dr dr morin he was the last person. What was his name? Morin. Morin. Mm-hmm. Moran. Doctor Morin. Yeah, was the last person to see Poe alive, and he also said that there are no signs of alcohol on him when he died. But also, that was three days after he was found in the gutter too. So that's still. And he was in the gutter, so you know the water. I don't think that would <laughs> that would sober him up. That... <laughs> he had a bag of McDonald's. <laughs> he had a coffee. He was fine. So, it, but Dr. Moore thinks there's something more to what was happening to him than just alcohol. Gotcha. But I just want to make sure that's clear. There's some theories that involve alcohol and there's some that do not. This one is the hooligans one does. Gotcha. I think we have to determine where we think he is in alcohol by the end. Let me read some more theories and we'll talk about it later. I did want to mention this too. Poe was part of a group, which I didn't know this until the other day. He was part of a group called the Sons of Temperance which was a group that was found basically uh, 1848. And what it is, it's basically death insurance, a death insurance company. So he did that a year before he died. Yeah. Mm. And that's fishy alone, but it's also really fishy because this organization or they're, they're like consists of brothers, right? They pay their dues. They, they pay monthly dues. It's like insurance. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's <laughs> Edgar Allan like Poe into the first day. He's like, wait, brothers, we're, uh, no cousins? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Can I bring my own cousin? <laughs> well, that's the thing. She was already dead by this time. So who benefited from his death? That's the biggest question. He had no one in his life that would benefit from this death. Unless all the money went to the company and maybe somebody inside the company arranged for him to die. So the sons of temperance. Yeah. So they would get the money. That's I don't know. I don't know how that works. Interesting theory because they had this policy, right? Where the, if someone did die in their group, they had to pay the widow, like, I think it was like $30 every, every month. It was a fair amount of money. Yeah. Um, I feel like people are still getting paid that, like that <laughs> type of money now, unfortunately. I uh, I wonder where that money would have went or or just the fact that he had nobody that they didn't have to pay. So it doesn't really benefit them. It just doesn't hurt them. No, it's but it's interesting that he joined them. Like, why would you even join them in the first place? Unless there's some kind of secret there. I'm trying to get to it. I don't know what it could be a cover up of something. Sons of Temperance also feels very religious to me. Like almost cultish. Yes. Yeah, maybe he had a secret bene- beneficiary. Benefactor. Benefactor. Yeah. May yeah maybe somebody that nobody knows about would collect money. Oh, beneficiary. Yeah, benef- that You were right. It. You were right the first time. Yeah. So maybe he had a secret beneficiary that nobody knew about. That could be. I don't know who. It, and obviously, maybe they I don't killed know. him by injecting alcohol in his brain. That's an interesting theory, but the, but to me is it's the why. Why would they do this? All about the money. Yeah, I guess. But in theory, they're losing something that pays them. It's just, that's just something I wanted to point out. I didn't get, I couldn't find that much detail into it, but I feel like digging into it, there's something there. Well, they would get the $30, right? Or whatever. The, it, I, the person he made his beneficiary, if that he person, died, they get yeah, the money. That person would. Yeah. So maybe that person killed him. Oh, that's an interesting, uh. 
Ooh, hang on to that. A hooligan, perhaps. Hang, hang on. Well, I wouldn't say that. Hang on to that because there's another theory where we could incorporate that idea into money. So theory two, probably the most logical theory, is the theory that he died naturally of rabies. Oh. Oh, yeah. Was his cousin a raccoon? <laughs> uh, just no. just half. Just half. <laughs> yeah, she was only partly raccoon. On his mom's side. Like rocket raccoon. So it seems that there are doctors that re-examined his death, and they, they actually wrote up a short article in the LA Times. I'm going to read the whole thing because it's that short. And this is from the archive. This is from 1996. Physicians at the University of Maryland Medical Center believe that the writer Edgar Allan Poe died of rabies, not complications of alcoholism or drug abuse, as previously have been believed. Poe died at the age of 40 on October 7th, 1849. Dr. R. Michael Bennett reports in the September issue of the Maryland Medical Journal that Poe suffered a classic symptoms of rabies. He was first delirious with tremors and hallucinations then slipped into a coma. He emerged from the coma, was calm and lucid, but then lapsed again into delirium, becoming combative and requiring restraint. He died four days after administration to the hospital. Those symptoms are not characteristics of alcoholism. Records show Poe had abstained from drinking for six months before his death. No one will ever be sure what killed him. But Bennett's concludes, rabies is his best bet. Interesting. It is very interesting because the symptoms match. Yeah. People say he was sober. His family and friends say he was sober, even though the public believes he was on things because of his stories, which is interesting. With yeah, the but you can eye, separate the artist from the art. That's, well, I think it was harder back then. I do. I think it was harder. Well, I mean, we can in 2021. Oh, absolutely. Unless they're an asshole, then cancel them. But yeah, I, I think I think there's weight to that. I do too. I think it's a heck of a theory. And it's not like rabies are some ridiculous thing that nobody could ever get. You know what right, I mean? Right, no. And it would make sense with the odd circumstances. If he's out of his mind because he's dealing with these symptoms, who knows what he did to, to end up in that gutter? It takes a while for rabies to like fully kick in too. It could take years. He could have got a bite when he was 37. What if that same animal bit the driver of the train? <laughs> that derailed his... Yeah. Oh, that would be, uh, be ironic. That would be ironic. There are some puzzle pieces that are not answered from that theory, though. Like, why he switched the cities, like, how he ended up in a different city. Unless you would just argue that he wasn't in the right state of mind. I would say he was delirious, bought the wrong ticket, ended up somewhere else. Maybe he never even left. Well, he had to leave, but Virginia and Maryland aren't that far. Right. Right. So he must have gotten into a train, but like you said, it's not that far. Also, the clothes, same scenario, though. Different mindset. Yeah. Different souls. Yeah. yeah. You could argue that's a really good possibility for what happened to him. Um, did I, ever, I don't know if I ever told you this. I actually got 15 rabies shots. 15? One just didn't cut it. Mm-mm. I said, give me all of them. Did I ever tell you the story? Did you ever have rabies? I, I don't know. Well, clearly not if you have 15 vaccinations for it. Well, here's, did I ever tell you the story or no? No. A couple of years ago, it was a Memorial Day. I was coming home, and Steph and I saw this dog that was running around uh, this busy street by my house. So we pulled over and we, tr- and we basically tried to get the dog to come to us. And eventually the dog it was a very nice dog until I touched its collar and it snapped at me and bit my thumb. Oh, there's still a little scar. There's still a little scar right there. You see? Yeah. It's not a big, it's not a big bite, mm-hmm. but it was bleeding pretty good. So I went to the hospital, uh, the ER, and I said, I got bit by this stray dog. Can you give me a shot for rabies? And they're like, do you want one or 15? They said, here's the thing. It comes in shots of 14. You have to take 14 shots to the thigh. Oh, my God. So both thighs. You should just got a tattoo with those needles (laughs) on your thigh. There were two nurses that went all through my thighs. And it hurt incredibly badly. I was like, this was not worth it. And then, But but you didn't get rabies. I did not get rabies. I had a follow-up where I got this bright pink injection into my shoulder. It was like a two-stage shot. Ah. It was crazy. And, was it uh, expensive to get all that done? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it was. Okay. But but you don't have rabies. No, I don't. I didn't. I'm not, I was like, I don't want to die for rabies. I've never seen you in a gutter, so we're mm-hmm. good. So I've got two more theories. This third theory is just straight up murder. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Poe did not only date his first cousin. Before he got with his first cousin, he courted this girl named Elmira. Imagine 
him dumping you for a cousin? Uh, she dumped him. Oh, well that that's <laughs> that's not better, but somehow better. Elmira Shelton, she was pretty wealthy. Uh, when Poe was in his twenties and confused about how he was going to live his life, he was all he was basically always confused. He was kind of that classic starving artist. This girl was his cousin's neighbor. Now Poe being Poe, he fell madly in love with her. <laughs> Poe being Poe, <laughs> he courted her in the creepiest kind of way he could. He had his cousin that was approximately seven at the time, the one he would eventually marry. He had her bring her a love poem, and he had her ask Amira for a lock of her hair. Uh, weirdly enough, the poem was, do you want to date Poe, circle one, yes or no? And uh, she wrote, never more. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll take that. But weirdly enough, it worked. She was actually kind of into it. But her father being smart, he said, absolutely not. And he forbid the union. I know. He's like, it's all about that money. <laughs> so years later, after Poe's wife had died and her husband had died, they actually reunited. Elmira's husband was rich, too. She married rich. Mm. And and even though... So they reunited. It was speculated that they were possibly going to get married because they're both single, ready to mingle. However, Elmira's deceased husband's... Their children encouraged them to not get together because there's this clause in her dead husband's will that if she ever remarried, she would lose out all the money that he left her, which was approximately $3 million in today's currency. Dang. So her kids were like, don't do it. Her brothers were like, don't, don't do this. However, the rumor was that they were still thinking about like eloping and then she was still going to marry him. He's like, yeah, we can just do it like the Huntington or the Chase. You know, wherever, <laughs> we can get married wherever you want. <laughs> You don't even have to say I do. Just give me your pin. <laughs> one, one bank account, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. But her brothers were like, no, f- no. Um, and the, the theory is that they were so against this idea that they did angry mob justice. And they found him in Philadelphia and they jumped him. And, jumped him all the way to Baltimore. <laughs> and even though Poe was shaken after this, this beating... He was going to still try to run away with his with his betrothed, but they found him in Baltimore, and he had changed clothes as like a disguise to try to hide from the brothers. But they found him, and they made him chug bottles of whiskey, and they beat him onto the brink of death. Wow, and that one's dramatic. It is very dramatic. Very dramatic. Would probably make a better story or episode or a CW drama. Don't know if I find it more believable, but it's interesting. It is definitely interesting. I could actually really see it. I just don't know what her appeal, and, and I mean this in the nicest way possible. I don't know why she would be so into him. Uh, maybe it's that weird ass haircut. It must be the mustache. <laughs> he had a strange haircut. He did. Yeah. He would have fit in perfectly in the emo scene of 2006. He still, yeah, he would have. You would have seen him at a show. He's you could definitely see bomb. it. Oh yeah, for sure. Little Raven necklace. Oh, psh. absolutely. So this is the last, the last theory. Theory number four: voter fraud. Oh, this is how politics plays into Poe's death. Super interesting. This is, if you ask anybody, this is like the leading theory. R- really, this mm-hmm. is the leading theory. Yeah. Okay. So this is the conspiracy we're all here for. This is something known as cooping. It's been done many times. And the idea is that it happened to Poe. And cooping is a method of voter fraud practiced by gangs in the 19th century where unsuspecting victims would be kidnapped, disguised, and forced to vote for specific candidates multiple times under different identities. So this was actually where he was found was a common dumping ground for victims of cooping. He was also found on an election day. And if you combine that with the fact that after people voted... They would give away free drinks mm. as like a uh, incentive. Yeah. If you put all those things together, it gives you a pretty good idea that this could have happened to Poe if you believe alcohol was involved. Yeah. You should have did this episode in November. <laughs> Voter yeah. fraud's been yeah. a hot topic. Yeah. But this is the idea of cooping. And the idea is that Poe got cooped. And this is a quote. Over the years, the cooping theory has come to one of the more widely accepted explanations for Poe's strange demeanor before his death. Before Prohibition voters were given alcohol after voting as a sort of reward, Poe had been forced to vote multiple times in this cooping scheme that might explain his semi-conscious ragged state. Around the late 1870s, Poe's biographer J.H. Ingram 
received several letters that blamed Poe's death on Cooping. A letter from William Han Brown, a member of the faculty of John Hopkins, explains that the general belief here is that Poe was seized by one of these gangs, his death happening just at the election of a sheriff that took place on October 4th, and he was cooped, stupefied with liquor, dragged out and voted, and then turned adrift to die. What was that last part? So basically just that he was, that they had him cooped and then he was let loose. And that was, that letter was written from one of the doctors at the hospital. So how do they force you to vote multiple times? They get you drunk. They get you drunk. They put you in different clothes. They kidnap you and they have you vote. What if you vote for who they don't want you to vote for? I think they beat you. Oh, so, so they, so you take a person, yeah. you dress him one way. He walks in and votes, and then it's basically like putting a mustache and a funny <laughs> sunglasses on him, and you put him back, and you just keep forcing people, you know, with, with their lives at risk to continually vote. Yeah. So they didn't have any precautions back then? No, they didn't like have any kind license. of like identifications or anything like that. Not like that. Not Nothing enough to... Why don't they just pay people to do it? Why do that? Because then they lose money. I guess. That's... Man, I... Whew. I mean, maybe. I don't... I feel like why would you pick such an eccentric and I mean he was like you said a B list at least celebrity. His work was not his face necessarily. Yeah, they didn't necessarily know it was Poe. Yeah, that's true. Man, that could be. Those are the theories. Those are the four I think leading theories of what happened to Edgar Allan Poe. So before we get to the discussion, we need to thank our patrons for subscribing and uh, supporting us. The new ones. The new ones. Yeah. You you get one shout out and that's it. <laughs> one only. But you still get one. So we just want to thank uh, Justin DeFazio. Tyler Wright, my boy. And Lonnie Olson. Thank you for joining our Patreon. We hope you enjoy the additional content. And if anybody else out there wants to join, go to patreon.com slash or search Believing the Bazaar. We got three tiers, tons of extra content, and we really appreciate all of you. Thank you. Tyler, are you ready to talk about these conspiracy theories? Yes. So it wasn't too, too history. I mean, it was like all history, but it wasn't too much history. I know. What you, yeah. So you, you needed to know the context to get to the actual story. Yes. I felt like I was putting you to sleep the whole time, but it's okay. So there are four conspiracy theories. Yes. Well, are, are they conspiracies, though? Yeah, that's an interesting question. There are definitely theories, for sure. I think the last one is a conspiracy yes, theory. Yes, I would agree with you. The The last one is definitely a conspiracy. I would even say that the hooligan gang thing is a little bit of a conspiracy, but just like dying from alcohol. What about the murder? The murder from the brothers? Man, okay, maybe they are all conspiracy <laughs> theories. You know, the one that isn't the rabies? Yes. Yeah. I buy that one. I do. All right, so let's do this. If you think any of the ones we consider conspiracies are believable, then it's believable. But if you think it's rabies, it's unbelievable. Because for, man, I don't really buy the gang thing, and I, I don't buy that he was killed because he was trying to marry that girl. Man, I don't I don't know, though. Money. Money is such a big thing. I am, I am really in favor of the Brothers theories. Looking back at it, that feels the most compelling to me. For some reason, I feel like it's so far away. Like, it wasn't like the first time they were together. Right, it's the second. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't think I buy it. But she's, okay, if you think about it this way, she's losing the family money that she would have, and she's losing her husband's money, right? Is she losing that money? She would, because it was in the husband's, ex-husband's contract that she remarried, she'd lose that $3 million. So if she married Poe, she'd lose $3 million. Yeah, so I don't think she would do that. Oh, so she they were never going to get married, you think? Yes. Mm. Now, I'm not saying he wasn't killed for that reason. I don't think she was interested the second time around. It was close. Some eh. some sources said they they were already engaged even. Nah. <laughs> nah. Where's that ring? Yeah, where the ring? Rings and things. Um, but do you buy the rabies one? That's also really interesting too, because that'll make someone act in a in a hilarious hilarious delirious kind of way, which is how he he was acting. And if the doctor says he didn't have any alcohol in his system. What else would explain that? That's one of the few theories that explains his death without alcohol, but still makes him delirious and have hallucinations. Right. And and literally, there was a study done on it. It's not like random, you know, username 42 on Reddit said it. Like, this was a real 
medical article, right, from the 90s? Yeah, that's true. Which makes it more credible. I, I The first theory, I don't, I'm don't. i not really into. Okay, the the hooligans. Yeah, I like love the name, but I'm not I'm not into that one. Okay, I don't I'm not either. That one just feels kind of half ass. And so the cooping one, the cooing, I yeah. cooing, cooing, cooping, cooping, cooping. I I feel like even like you explained it well, and I understand it. I I feel like a part of me just doesn't know enough about that in general. Like, why would they? Can I feel like I need to, to research how popular that was, what gangs were doing it, how prevalent, mm. which is, I guess, the same as popular. I, I, I feel like I just need to know more about that to speak on it. Like, I feel like I got a very, I got an overview. Yeah. But I feel like I, I need- to know more details about it. Yeah. It was pretty popular. It was, it was not an unknown thing. I think if, if I knew for a fact that Poe and, what was her name? Uh, uh, Amira, Elmira, the 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 second wife. Yeah, Amira. If I knew, guaranteed that they were engaged or close to engagement, I would not have a hard time believing that he was murdered. For some reason, I don't see that she was going to do that. That's mm, because we don't have any kind of proof that they were engaged. It's just going off of word of mouth. Yeah, uh, and I have no, I have no stance or reason to believe that they weren't close. I just feel like I don't know. Maybe I need to know more about that one too. I like rabies. I like the rabies one. See, so like unbelievable. It's a weird. It's a weird way to rate it because it's not like I don't believe the other ones. I mean, it would be more skeptical than anything. Okay, that's that's fair too. Because I'm not saying that. I feel like the the cooping and the murder. I just need to know more about or need to think on it more. I because I could definitely see how they both could happen. Especially you said cooping is like the most prevalent one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the most popular theory. Yeah. I feel like the rabies, I wonder, maybe there's one detail that just eliminates the rabies thing and we just don't know it. I don't think there is. That's, that's the thing. It fits so well. Yeah. I'll go skeptical leaning the rabies, but I could, with more information and more time to think on it, I could easily lean more towards those two, but I don't, I don't like the hooligans thing. I don't either. Uh, That one's, I agree with that one's firmly out. I think we should revisit episodes where we're like we need to think on this and just do a whole episode where we're revisiting let's have a listener submission interview with edgar Allan poe <laughs> the dream right the dream that's yeah. definitely one of those people where i'd like want to sit down like the, people ask a question like you get to sit down with like three figures in history i would not pick edgar Allan poe i would definitely want to pick him really mm-hmm. It'd be super interesting <sighs> him shakespeare and john denver who the fuck is john denver oh god <laughs> Who is the second person you said Abraham Lincoln? No, uh, Shakespeare. Did I make Abraham Lincoln up? Yes. You didn't say that. No, I did not. You promised. I promise you. Where did that That's come a from? popular answer to that question. Hmm. You don't know who John Denver is? I have no idea. The Country Road song, Take Me Home. Oh, no, I didn't know who that was. Yeah. So where do you land? I believe this cooping. You believe it? I believe the cooping. Okay. What gang would that have been at the time? It would be like a... Uh... Someone in support of some, maybe like someone in support of like unions and they want the union guy to get voted in. Was there a lot of gangs in Virginia? This was in Baltimore. So then why did he end up in Baltimore? He was kidnapped from the train station probably. So in Philadelphia, they were kidnapping people to coop in Baltimore? Or from Richmond. uh, Maybe. I. You said they're close, right? Yeah, this, well, you're, you're trusting me. This, the states are close. It seems like an awful long way to bring somebody just for that. I feel like you could find people in... Who knows how he got... Maybe he just stopped over there for the day. You don't know. Yeah, you just wanted to look at the Lincoln Monument. He's like, if I... Well, actually, time-wise... No, it, that wasn't there yet. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I was going to say, if he, he was probably like, that's who he wanted to meet. If, you know, he could talk to somebody who was dead. But he died before Abraham Lincoln. He'd probably want to meet Shakespeare or Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley's a good guess. So you go believable. I believe I believe the cooping. Yep. Okay. Believable. See, for some reason, I just picture like an Al Capone thing, but this is like 60 years before that. Yeah. I don't know. We should, let's research gangs of Washington, D.C. before <laughs> Denzel Washington. Okay. Deal. So thank you for joining us on this episode about Edgar Allan Poe. One of my personal heroes, honestly. A hero? Yeah. I love his writing. I love what he inspired. 
You didn't take his romantic advice, though. No, I did not. I did not. For the best. I believe so, yeah. He is such an interesting figure in history, and his death is still something that I would say haunts his name. That's a good way to put it. But I'm glad we got to talk about it today because it's so interesting. We're never going to know the answer. No, and that's one of those things that you just have to accept. Yeah. Unless they were right in the 90s about the... The rabies. rabies which is, you know, probably true. <laughs> But anyway, thank you for joining us on this episode. If you like this and you want to hear more stuff from us, we have launched our Patreon, and there are a plethora of things if you want to explore. We've got a couple of videos, a couple of extra audio things. We got quizzes, we got interviews, we got games. So if you want more, head over to Patreon, check that out. And if you're just enjoying the podcast, hit us up on Apple Podcast Reviews and give us five stars and let us know what you think. Yeah, that's also very important for us, and we'd appreciate it. Absolutely. So thank you for listening. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bazaar. A podcast as bizarre as you are. <laughs>